so Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Meriwether County Board of Commissioners February 28, 6 p.m. regular call meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. If everyone will stand for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, we are welcome to have gospel recording artist John Kendall Jr. here with us tonight to do the invocation. Let us say, Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, power, and the glory. Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless this board meeting, bless all the members of this board, each and everybody here. Lord, we ask you, Lord, them to be on one accord to serve this community, to change life. And Lord, we ask in you, in the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you Thank very you. much. I pledge Please be seated. If you have any electronic devices, cell phones, please mute those for the duration of the meeting. We'll move to the next item, and that is to adopt the agenda. But before that, we need to actually do a couple of additions. Under presentations, we need to add item number one, Ms. Carolyn McKinley, um, for a discussion of Flint River Water Trail. Item number two, FEMA update, Ms. Katherine Anderson and guest. Under new business, item number six, Request from Lake Merriweather Advisory Board regarding fees. Are there any other additions? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I move. Have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Motion approved. All right, next item is presentations. Item number one, Ms. Carolyn McKinley. welcome well thank you it's good to see you i've been up here so um this will be very brief um beverly i know you asked me if i had any handouts well i do and i at the time i spoke to you i didn't think i did so her mic on sorry about that um anyway. is that michael mm -hmm. okay okay can y'all hear me okay okay because i can speak a little louder if i need to um, so this is on our Flint River Water Trail project, and um, as most of you recall, last fall I came and presented and gave an update on the Flint River Water Trail, and that is based on the portion of the Flint River that goes through Meriwether County, so that's on about the 28 miles of that part of the river. And just as a, a point of information, a water trail is exactly as the word implies, it is a trail that is within the body of water, so it helps people to navigate the water. It's very good for tourism, promoting tourism, economic development, and also promoting environmental stewardship amongst the users. So that project was finished uh, back right before the holidays, and Meriwether County was recognized by the Georgia River Network. Um, for our work in completing that water trail because we were the first designated water trail on the Flint River, officially designated. Um, since that time, we've been working with our neighboring counties. We started with Spalding, Epson, Pike, and Talbot, but now we have extended our um, communication and our work um, actually all the way from Spalding County to Lake Seminole. So that's a big chunk of the state of Georgia we have. There are a few counties right in the middle part of the, of the state that we have not secured a representative and got them fully on board, but we've got a lot of good work, both in the northern part of the river and all the way down south. So we're making lots of good progress. We're about halfway through that project. We have set a deadline of December 2024 to complete that, and that'll be good. Not, you know, you may not think it's going to be so good for Meriwether County, but the more people we get on the river, then the more tourists we have coming into the community, and the more, the better it is for the entire state of Georgia. So it's an important project. Um, on Friday, I received a call <clears throat> from Senator John Ossoff's office, 
And um, his staff said that he wanted to speak to me. Well, I assumed he meant they meant his staff wanted to speak to me, but that he was going to be calling on Monday morning and make myself available, blah, blah, blah. So um, he called yesterday and it was actually Senator Ossoff on the phone. Well, I don't know about y'all. Maybe this doesn't apply to anybody in the room but me, but I've never received a call, a personal call from a senator before. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a big deal and I was quite humbled, but um, he is going to do a, a commendation from the Senate floor for me uh, for our work on the Flint River Water Trail. What I want you to know though, is that, that that may have my name on it, but it is for Meriwether County. All that work we've been doing is for the benefit of the county and for the state of Georgia. And I can promise you that none of that work would have happened without support of this board. Financial support, moral support, I mean, y'all were so good when you negotiated that deal with DNR to get us the new boat ramp out there. And it's just, um, it's one of those projects that is a feel good project. I mean, how can you say no to something like this that helps the economy and helps tourism, helps folks. Um, and um, again, just want to say thank you to y'all because it would not have happened without you all. So there will be a letter or whatever he says, read from the Senate floor to acknowledge this. And then I will receive some sort of certificate or letter or whatever. Are you flying to DC? No, I was hoping he was saying, we really, really want you in Washington, but um, he, did, he didn't say that. So we'll send you up there to represent it. <laughs> That'd be fine. I'll be ready. Um, and then the last thing, this is uh, responsible we in the handouts. I just want to give you all these um, economic impact numbers. And this is the most recent data from the state of Georgia for 2021. And I, most of y'all have seen that before. So I'm not telling you much new, but I don't know the college and the and the and have some of those. So the reason I want to the chief you put the and some of the reason I want to remind you and share this data with you is that y'all are interested in our children to do this. And we were raising the future of that, but I want you to know that children will continue to pay all for their work. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ms. Carolyn. I do want to say before you leave, thank you for everything you do for this county. You do put off the thanks to everybody else, but we know who really heads up a lot of the things and who speaks at most of these events that gets us a lot of uh, places and gets us in a lot of doors. So thank you for everything that you do for the county as well. You're very welcome. I'm humbled to be a part of it. All right. Next item, item number two, update from FEMA, Ms. Katherine Anderson. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Katherine Anderson, I'm a, and I'm the Intergovernmental Affairs Specialist with FEMA. And my role is to work with the uh, county commissioners and mayors to provide them any information. You've probably been getting some of my emails with news advisories and fact sheets. In any case, I wanted to formally introduce myself and also we have a few of our um, FEMA staff members here that are going to give you some information um, on individual assistance and what's been happening in Meriwether. Um, his name is Brian Miller. We also have someone from SBA that will provide you a little information about the SBA program and also what they've done in your community. Um, her name is Vivian Santos Rodriguez. And um, I don't know if we have our public assistance person here. Yes. Oh, yes, we have our public assistance person here that will also provide you some information about the public assistance program. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoever's next. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you for letting us be here. Um, just to give you a little quick numbers, 312 individuals registered or households registered for, uh, within uh, Meriwether County with uh, FEMA. For, um, and we've awarded uh, $144,984 for the, the 312 individuals or uh, a subset of those. Uh, if anybody, we've closed our disaster recovery center that's in town here, uh, but if anybody has any questions or issues related to their case, they can call the FEMA 800 number, which is 1-800-621-3362. And because we're rushed for time, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Whoever wants to present next, come forward. 
Good afternoon. My name is Vivian Santos. I am a public affairs specialist with the SBA. And I would like to let you know that for this county, we already have approved more than $300,000 in loans, uh, disaster loans. But um, it's true that the center closed here, but we have four more centers. We're going to be staying in Georgia until March 17th. So if someone needs some kind of assistance, they can go to the our different centers. We have one in Troop County. I think that is the closest one at the William Griggs um, Sports Center. And we have some we have some people from FEMA still there. So if you know someone who needs assistance, they can go there. We can answer questions. We can help them to uh, fill out that application and whatever they need until the until March 17th, Friday. So that's, that will be all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, How are you? Good evening. My name is Jack Mutenjani. I'm with the Public Assistance uh, Program. Uh, what we do with public assistance, we reinvest the states, locals, and municipalities with the uh, it's a reinvestment program. Uh, we handle uh, the debris operations. We handle the category A, C through G. A means the debris. B, it means emergency protective measures. C, roads, D, dams, and then its equipments, and so on. So what we have done in Meriwether, we have conducted what we call the exploratory calls with a point of contact to assign the PDMG to work with the, the local municipalities in Meriwether. We also uh, concluded the uh, recovery scoping meeting uh, so that we can find out the damages here in Meriwether County. So we are working with the point of contact to make sure that we assemble all the damages so that we can see what is it that is damaged so that we can quickly respond and reinvest the costs that are incurred uh, with the, with the, within the county. Um, we, we do emphasize the point that uh, we need some documentation is the key for us to be able to reinvest or for the state to be able to reinvest uh, uh, the cost that has been incurred. So these are the things that we're working with, with the county. That's, those are the highlights that I'm bringing forth. Pending any questions, I'll be more than willing to answer questions. Any commissioners have any questions? Thank you very much. Um, I also wanted to report that our disaster survivors, we've been seeing those of the teens that go at the onset and visit homes and try to register. They were able to visit 1,288 homes. Uh, they were able to register on site 11 to 11 registrations. And they were also able to update some uh, like three inquiries. They also visited 270 um, they had community interactions, which include faith-based organizations, um, community-based organizations, and, um, and 44 private sectors. So with all that information being distributed, they calculate that over through the force multiplier, it probably reached over 6,850 individuals. Thank you very much. Impressive. Well, if you have any questions or anything, you know, please feel free to reach out to me if anything, and I can you know, try to get you the answer. Thank you very Thank much. You so much for your time. Do you need a picture or photograph with us? The last one that came needed it for documentation. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, is there some? The young lady, this is with FEMA also, the civil rights. Is that correct? Did you yes, want sir. to present on that? No. no. Okay. You just wanted to pass it out to us. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, my name is Benita Dallas. I am a disability integration advisor for FEMA. And what we do is all things disability. We are looking for persons who are reporting themselves as self-identifying as persons with disabilities or access and functional needs. And we break it out by county. So for Meriwether, the numbers that we have, we're showing that approximately 20% um, of the persons who've actually registered with FEMA have some sort of disabling condition. And then we narrowed it down to where we actually have 
various categories. So just to give you an idea, hearing difficulties was showing approximately 6%, disability um, that includes um, vision um, impairments, 4.8%, and that can be blind or visually impaired. Cognitive disability was showing 8%. Ambulatory situations, that's what you're walking and getting around in movement, 8%. Um, Self-care disability, which could be almost anything that, that they describe, we're at 3%. And then independent living difficulties where they need to have a personal care assistant is approximately 6%. The other hat that we also put on is when we're dealing with the applicants, such as businesses and things of that sort, where we want to make sure that the path of travel that is involved with um, moving around the building is clear and there are no impediments. So we are on the exploratory calls as well as the um, recovery scoping meetings and follow-up meetings where we listen for and find out whether or not a business or any type of location that needs some sort of rebuild, it has damages or has been totally demolished, we'll be following the ADA um, rules um, and standards when those things are rebuilt or if they are, are repaired. And so that's one I wanted to let you know that we also involved with that. Thank, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's it. Well, thank you all for coming and taking the time out of your day. All right, next item on the agenda is the finance report, Mr. Bill. Yes, sir, <laughs> Mr. Chair, we got a couple of reports in front of you. One of the bank balances and uh, General fund remains strong at 3.2 million plus the 5 million in the uh, LGIP fund. So that's really good. Uh, the EMS fund is looks interesting. It's 103,000. Normally this time of the month, it's about 70 or 80 the most. So we're looking for a real strong month next month for the EMS receipts. And that's all I've got on that report, unless you have any questions. All right, any commissioners have any questions for the finance director? Hearing none, we'll move to the next item, which is citizen. Got one more uh, report. No. Go ahead, Bill. I'll make it brief. I promise. Also, uh, several weeks ago or months ago, Michelle asked me about starting back up the budget analysis I provide to y'all quarterly. And uh, this is not a profit and loss statement. This is the government's version of a more or less a, of a budget and how you're performing against that budget. So right now, if this was in December 31st, 2022, we should have 75% remaining in each of the budget categories. If you look at general government, we've got 69% left, uh, election 61%, and that's due to a couple of elections we had in the fall, which ate up a lot of her budget. And the next page, uh, Community services is down to 37%. And that's because we paid the uh, three rivers dues up front for the year. So that's why that number is, is so low. And that's what basically what that's what we're looking for to make sure that this percent remaining is at least at 75% or close to there. And uh, we monitor that. The personnel line items we monitor on a monthly basis to make sure that they're staying where they need to be. That's just a brief update on that report. And once you look at it, if you got any questions, please let me know and I'd be glad to answer them. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are you sure you're finished? Finished. All right. Didn't want to interrupt. Unless you have any questions. All right. We're good. All right. Next item is citizen comments. And I think we do have a citizen signed up. So therefore, I have to read this to you if you'll bear with me. Speakers must contact the county clerk at her email address or at 706-672-3462 on or before the dates and times listed in below in order to be placed on the agenda to speak. Speakers must provide their name, address, and topic they wish to discuss. For the second Wednesday of the month, um, 9 a.m. meeting, speakers must email or call before 5 p.m. on the day before the scheduled meeting. For the fourth Tuesday of the month, 6 p.m. meeting, speakers must email or call before 5 p.m. on the day of the scheduled meeting. Speakers must be 
direct, must direct their remarks to the board of commissioners and not to individual commissioners or to the audience. Personal disagreements or individ with individual commissioners or county employees are not a matter of public concern and personal attacks will not be tolerated. Speakers will be allotted three minutes to speak on the chosen topics as they relate to matters pertinent to the jurisdiction of the Board of Commissioners. No questions will be asked by any of the commissioners during citizen comments. Outbursts from the audience will not be tolerated. Common courtesy and civility are expected at all times during the meeting. No speaker will be permitted to speak more than three minutes or more than once unless the board votes to suspend this rule. And I think we have Mr. Navarro's Mahone. If you'll come up, you'll have three minutes to speak before, sir. Now, um, how you doing, board? Well, I can't present you guys. Yeah. Well, I'm Navarro's Mahone. Um, I'm a director for Help Us Reach Them 501c3 nonprofit here in Meriwether County. Um, I serve the community through different programs that we created, such as um, development program, mentoring, scholarship programs, et cetera. Um, we would like to ask the board to consider some of our programs to be implemented in some of the county facilities. Um, if you would, if you may, do you have any questions? Can you be a little more specific in what you're requesting? You said in some. Okay. Um, like the, some of the programs like tutoring, mentoring, um, development programs, basically doesn't have a home or you know, um, we would like to use some of the county facilities such as maybe uh, the fields or courts or gyms or different things like that so that we could um, build our community and, you know, provide for the youth and elders in the community. All right. Thank you. We will discuss it, um, but according to what we have here, we won't openly do it today. If right. there's anything else you need, if you'll just communicate with the county administrator by email and she'll communicate that to us, but we will discuss it um, with our attorneys and we'll get back with you. Thank you for your time. All right, next item are the minutes from the February 8th, 2023, 9 a.m. meeting. Um, you all have had time to read over that. Is there anything that needs to be changed? All right. Hearing none, do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Motion carries. Next item, public hearing, we have no need. Um, appointments, we have no need. Next item, unfinished business, finalization of the 2023 LeMig projects. Mr. Cawthorn is here. We do know the ones that have been approved we have received that funding and we do need to get this out, bid out so that we don't run into the later weather of the year when the projects are let. Mm -hmm. um, And I've got uh, Chairman Threadgill's collection and also talked with um, Commissioner Worthley about Worthy. his. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. So we're kind of down to the point of what we submitted to uh, GDOT. We had a list. We'll make some changes for uh, District 5 and then for Mr. Commissioner Collins, Commissioner King. What I had on the list that we submitted to D to GDOT was the extension of Luthersville Road to Alvington Road from Rocky Mount. I don't know if that serves y'all, but that's kind of the only thing we don't have the finalized there. And I'm looking at one thing for uh, Commissioner Plank and we'll be, be ready to put together the bid package and then we'll bring it back to the board for approval. Okay, so we don't need to do anything tonight. Not unless, you, in, in, if you've got a change in the next couple of weeks. All right. Think how long we put that together in a week. We'll have to get it on the next agenda, which is a week. We'll yeah, probably week. get them the day before. Make you change it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to do some figures for you. Oh, yeah. I don't know if y'all had any other comments. No, not at all. Any commissioners have any comments? I just appreciate all the work. And uh, I want to just comment. Thank you for the work, especially uh, on Mount Pilgrim. Forest. 
whatever takes place there, but with the theme of representatives and all that are here, um, I sure hope that we'll be able to get some reimbursement from FEMA for the damage happening to the roads. And with that being said, I don't, I, I'm not sure how many, how many other commissioners know it, but uh, the newly paved road, there's a lot of logging that's is affecting our Mount Pilgrim Road. And I just hope that when we get to Beulah Evans that all the logging's taking place out there. So, but with that, um, that's the disheartening thing from the tornado damage. And, and, and it's understandable, people are entitled to recover the timber, but at the same time, it's doing a number on our roads. Right. So. And suppose we're gonna meet with one of the mm -hmm. FEMA field inspectors this week or next week. And that'll be okay. good. But thank you for that work. Thank you, Mr. Bill. All right, next item is new business. Item number one, set a public hearing for case number 2023-006 for road closure, Twin Lake Road for, from Jimmy Clark Road to Rat Road. Um, Sir Chair and Board, um, we would like to set this public hearing for March 28th. That will give us time to um, publish it and make sure all the information is available. Is that okay with everyone set, set a public hearing for March 28th? Right. Do I have that in form of a motion? I'll motion. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? <laughs> motion carries. I keep up with y'all. Item number two, set a public hearing for case number 2023-007 for road closure Jimmy Clark Road from Mockingbird Lane to Germany Road. We would like this for March 28th as well. Do I have a motion to set a public hearing for March 28th? Motion. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Next item, set a public hearing for case number 2023-008 for road closure, Peapod Road, Callaway Road, 362 to Lima Lane. Do I have, you want to set that one for March 28th? 28th as well, yes, sir. Do I have a motion to motion. set? Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. <laughs> They're all in my district, so I figured I'd make a motion. All right. Item number four, approval of banking and financial services and signatures for 2023. Um, sir Chair, this is for our banking to remain at the current institutions and signature cards to be signed. This is just yearly housekeeping. Okay. So do I have a motion to approve and sign the bank and financial services? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number five, ceiling and caulking of courthouse clock bell tower. Chairman of the Board of Commission. I think you have in your packet uh, the issue paper on, on the ceiling of the courthouse clock tower and atrium. Uh, they currently have leaks that are coming into the courtroom. They're in the third floor in the atrium. And it's all developing around the copper at the dome uh, down through the clock and then the tower that holds all that up. So uh, this is sort of our second phase of the courthouse roof repairs. Um, a couple of months ago, we went back and lined all the roof leaders down to ground level where we were getting a lot of leaks, third, second, and first floors, and that stopped. Um, so this is kind of moving into the second phase over the over the tower. How many phases are we looking at? This may be the last phase. But this is strictly just the water and the roofing issues, right? It's yes. the what about cosmetics? Uh, I mean, obviously we got to get do a lot of cosmetics inside uh, the courthouse, right? We may be getting uh insurance claim on on the interiors. And we we're working with that with the ACCG. We've submitted and we are working with it, but we have not okay. gotten a But that would answer. be like phase three, That's right? Correct. Yes. Okay. We have to fix the intrusion of the water first, That's and then I'm we can move for remediation. One of the big costs is there's uh, been lead-based paint on the tower, and that's one of the big items having to get that off and recovered. Do we have, how many bids do we have? Just one? Or? Sir? How many bids do we have on repair? Just one. This this is a 
uh, principal construction was doing our construction management. And what they've done is gone and bid out these subcontractors to do the, the Pacific work, like the ceiling and stuff like that. And this one's 210000 Yes, sir. So they bid it out and they get bids coming in? They they bid out all the sub sub work. Uh, like this last fire station we had, they, they were our con construction manager. And then they bid out all the subcontractors for sheetrock, electrical, plumbing, things like that. And how many bids did they get back? Do you know? I don't know. Do you see those other bids? I haven't. I can ask for them. Yeah, because I'd like to see those other bids too. Just and then prepare. we'll put it on the next agenda since it's just next week. We'll okay. add it back there. But if we can get all those quotes for us to look at, that'd be great. I'll do that. All right. Any other commissioners? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. All right, item number six, request from Lake. We need the table. Well, it doesn't say, it just says sealing and caulking. It doesn't say we're doing anything. So we'll just add it to the next agenda. Can we have a motion to move this item to the next agenda? Make a motion. Have a second. Yes, motion second. and a second, all in favor? All right. All right. Request from Lake Merriweather Advisory Board regarding fees. Commissioner Collins? Yeah, we had a, a Lake Merriweather Advisory Board meeting, and the board recommended uh, increasing the camping on the RV sites from $20 to $30 and to leave the primitive camping at $10 per day because we added the dump station and put the new sites in. So we request, we recommended that they move it to $30 a day. I don't really go camping that much. Do we know what the other items That's in line with? Yeah, it is in line six with to other. $40. Most of the other places. All right. Any commissioners have any comments? No. By the <clears throat> request from Commissioner Collins, who is on the Lake Mirror with the board, do I have a motion to increase those camping fees to 30 dollars from twenty dollars and to have the primitive remain at ten dollars. So move. All right. Have a motion to have a second. Motion as you got to speak in, in the mic. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Motion passes. You abstaining? Yeah. All right. I did. Yeah. All right. Next item is report from the county administrator. Thank you. <laughs> I just have a few um things to go over. Just wanted to reiterate, and I know FEMA stood here and talked as well, but the Disaster Relief Center did close. Um, anybody that still needs it can still call that 800 number, which was given out earlier, or go to the website. Um, and there is a DRC open in Troop County as well as Spalding County. Those are the two closest locations to us. Um, the spring challenge for the county's wellness program will begin on March 20th, so we're looking forward to employees participating in that. <clears throat> and a breath of fresh air and good news, we received word from DOT today regarding the low impact bridge program where we had applied for that, which is the bridge at Beaver Lake Road and Shoals Creek has met the required elements and been programmed for replacement. And that's all I have. All right. Next item is report from county commissioners, Commissioner Collins. Well, I'd just like to thank the county for keep doing the good work since the tornado. And also at the Lake Merriweather board, we welcome two new board members, Frank Kell and David Williamson. And that's about all I have. All right. Commissioner Plant. I want to go ahead and uh, let everyone know that Keep Mirror with Beautiful Cleanup will be April the 22nd. We do have packages that are available now, and uh, friends can be gracious enough to get it on the website that you can download. But uh, there's going to be a few changes in dumpster locations and all, uh, primarily no dumpster in Alberton, but it will be north of Gay. So hopefully it'll service Gay as well as Alberton. Um, with that being said, uh, it's Pretty much going to be the same way that we've done them in the past and the tires will be at it public works uh the location for there it will be 12 tires per um meriwether county resident up to 
with um, primarily the main thing now, we really need volunteers and whether or not you can help volunteer or man a station where the, um, the dumpsters are located. We are short staffed in public works, but it, it, it does help out everybody that can help um, or pick up litter, whichever. But it is <clears throat> tw held twice a year. And um, we do have Mr. Haney up in the Primrose community that does appliances and all. So that helps us out as well. But there will be another meeting for the Keep Mirror with the Beautiful and we'll finalize all the, the plans as far as groups and pickups. But you get a free t-shirt. So <laughs> if you'll help pick up trash, we'll appreciate it. But thank you, that's it for me. All right, Mr. King. Um, just following up again on the dirt roads and the potholes, um, I wanna commend Mr. Paul Thorne and especially uh, Barry over at Public Works. Uh, my phone's been ringing off the hook, but I meet with them or call them or meet them out there. And within 24, 48 hours, they're getting it resolved. Um, so at least we are getting positive feedback from the, the citizens that they're glad to see us respond and get something done. Um, I did talk with Barry. I think I've been working in construction for 41 years. And I always watch the weather every day. So the other day they motor graded a road and it was three days of rain behind it. So I said, let's kind of watch the weather and or not go motor grade just before three days of rain because you're going to have your phone ring then it's a sloppy mess but um but they're following up the gravel and i don't know if there's any money in this plus funds i'm you know this, i'm new to all this but we've got to spend some money on gravel i've been living here 22 years i've been coming to these meetings myself and i hear the same thing and i've even said the same thing the citizens are, are mostly concerned with is dirt roads and i know they chose to live on a dirt road but however they are taxpayers citizens and there's a lot of nice homes out there. Um, and they all say the same thing. It's, it's just a little sprinkle of a gravel and it's not enough to do it. So I don't know where we can pull it from and get it, but I think, and you and I talked about it today, I think if we get someone to motor grade it decent and put some good gravel down and not just sprinkle it, we'll start solving the problems. And then I spoke with Bill um, and then go back and start fixing bad spots in the dirt roads like we do on the paved roads, not take a motor grader up here and just start grading all the gravel down, trying to fill the holes in, go down and fix the bad spots and leave the good spots alone. And and they, I think if we start doing that, we're gonna really have some citizens start smiling a little bit more. Appreciate yeah, your several projects here, Mark, and you're gonna to have to start over. You have to redo some of the drainage, get that done, and we can get the road trail and get a good amount of gravel on there. And it, it'll be a lot less money. <laughs> That's that's what I was trying to lead to is, is less maintenance, but take care of the spots. I went down, a guy called me. I went down um, Chapel, Cook. Chapel Cook Road. You know, there's potholes. Yeah, that's a dirt road. But all of a sudden, there was a spot that was probably from here to that door right there, right in the middle of the road. It looked like a hero had plowed it under. And I either had to go in this guy's driveway to go around it or ease this side. So I eased this side, and I slid off in the ditch. And I had to put my little truck in four-wheel drive to get out. And so I said, oh, this is the spot they want me to look at. So, uh, but I think Barry was out there today taking care of that. But yeah, if we could just, you know, I know we, everybody wants a paid road and a lot of our dirt roads is not going to get paid for a long time because we don't have the money, but we got to get the dirt roads in good condition. Keep up the good work. Take a while. I know, <laughs> I know, but we got to start somewhere. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, and I'll end it with some good news. The people in Manchester have been waiting for a little bit over a year to get a bridge reopened. Um, so DOT finished that up today. It will be open first thing in the morning, and there will be a dedication service um, to a gentleman um, probably a month or so down the road from that. They're going to name it after him. Um, he um, was an African-American that did fight in one of the wars, and I apologize for not knowing, but the bridge will be dedicated to him in Manchester. Um, that's all I have. And next item is report from county attorney. I have no report. I do understand we do, we have need for executive session to go into litigation, personnel, and real estate. All right. The future meetings are March 8th, uh, regular meeting at 9 a.m. and March 28th, regular meeting at 6 p.m. Do I have a motion to go into executive session for litigation, personnel, and real estate? Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We are in executive session at 639. Do I have a motion to go back into regular session? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? 
back in regular session at 739. No action was taken in executive session, but we do have a couple of things we need to do out here. We need to authorize full-time employee Laura Boglin to attend the Firefighter Burn Foundation camp um, as a regular work week at her regular rate. Do I have a motion to do so? Make a motion. Do I have a second? Motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Next one is motion to offer as needed position to Skip Richmond uh, to complete employee change form reflecting position changes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Next item, motion to increase Robert Lovett's monthly stipend uh, to $100. Do I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Before y'all vote on it, to $100 or buy $100? That was a stipend. So, okay. Buy $100. Sorry. Motion? Yes. Second. Right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. All right. Anything else to come before the board? He, he Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second. Motion to a second. All in favor? We're adjourned. <laughs>